Welcome back to the Wizard's Yacht. And today we're going to talk about ways that you can save on gas. Gas prices are going up and we need to talk about that. Let's get started. Right off the bat, I do apologize for the sound of someone urinating in the background. It's not. It's the air conditioner putting out water on the yacht that's behind me. All the air conditioners at the marina, people's boats, put out water. That's the way they run. Also the birds and everything. It's weird nature. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. But today we're going to go over some things to help you guys save gas. It's not going to be the boring little tips that you see on the news. They're very vague, very not wanting to dive too deep into anything. We're going to actually talk about the mechanicals and how things are working and some things that could really do well for you to save some gas. We're approaching $5 a gallon across the whole country and it is probably going to go higher. One of the ways not to save gas is to buy one of these. One mile per gallon, guys. One mile per gallon when we're using this thing. Luckily, we have full tanks from last year when it was half of what it cost today. We will probably stretch those tanks out all summer long. Where we used to go out for a couple, three hours cruising the lake, we probably will do one hour this time because it is super expensive for gas and you guys already know that. But now let's talk about cars. I have several items on a list we're going to go over and there's some things that could put some more money in your pocketbook or purse or whatever it is that you carry your money in. I actually have 10 points to go over. Man, that bird is loud, guys. Oh well, it is what it is. The first thing we're gonna talk about is tire pressures and your TPMS light. How many of you know how much pressure are in your tires right now? Most Americans don't. And the fact of the matter is, most Americans have a TPMS light on and a year or two ago, you would just say, I'm fine, I'm good, I don't need to worry about that. But you do, in these times of high gas prices, need to worry about the TPMS light. Now let's think a little bit, for those of you who have ridden bikes as a child or currently ride bicycles today, if you air down your tires to half of what they are right now and go riding, it'll be really hard to pedal. And you'll be like, yeah, I'm not doing this, I'm gonna put air back in my tires. It's the same idea on your cars. Why would you let the pressure drop down and just say, I'll get to it later. It's literally eating your gas up. Ideally, in the shop, I put everybody's tires at 35 PSI, unless they specify they want a certain PSI. And some people actually specify to use the placard on the door jam and say, I want exactly that. And that's what I'll do. I'll be happy to do that for them. But generally 35 to 37 PSI is a good range. It gives a good combination of comfort and fuel economy. If you go closer to 40, it will get even better fuel economy, but it will ride rougher. Every little bump in the road, you'll feel it. If you go below 32 down to 30 or 28, it'll ride really mushy. And that's where you really start eating up the gas. So make sure you're mindful and go around and check your tire pressures at least once a week at least once a month guys come on you, you don't want to whirl around on flat tires but you want to make sure you're getting every ounce of energy out of the gas that's in your tank for what you paid for it because we all know we've all paid dearly lately for gasoline the next one on the list is maintenance just basic tune-ups and things of that nature if you haven't checked your air filter or even looked at your air filter for five years you might want to do that now it literally could be halfway or three quarters of the way clogged and it could cost you three or four or more miles per gallon. Air filters range from anywhere from four or five dollars to fifteen dollars. Go ahead and change it out. It could be a savings of hundreds of dollars in a year. It would definitely be worth it. Another thing is make sure your spark plugs are in optimal condition most cars today, around 100,000 miles, 125 is where you should be changing them. Most new cars come out with iridium plugs. They last that long or longer. And it used to be that I would tell people, just use your plugs until it starts misfiring. You'll be surprised. Some cars reach 200,000 miles on the original plugs. 
Sorry guys, we had to move position. The wind just came up pretty stiffly and it, is, it was making a lot of noise in the microphone. So here we are in a different position and we'll continue on with what we were talking about and that was spark plugs. Like I just mentioned, if they start misfiring, you're using fuel into a cylinder that's no longer making power. It's just getting sent right back out the exhaust. We definitely do not want that happening. It's wasted fuel. Maintenance also can include oil changes to make sure that you have what's recommended to be in your engine, nice and clean. Clean oil filter, clean oil. It seems like that those things wouldn't make a big difference, but they can be half a mile or a mile per gallon. When you start tallying all these things up, it really can make a big difference. So make sure you're on top of the maintenance on your vehicle, it is that important. The whole service is not gonna cost you thousands of dollars, maybe a few hundred. Spark plugs are typically five to $10, maybe as much as 15 on some vehicles. Unless you have an Aston Martin like Hoovies where they're 35 or $40 per spark plug times 12. Obviously, we, most of us don't have that, so. Make sure you're on top of your maintenance on your vehicle. The next thing we're gonna jump into right now is driving habits. And a lot of people that have hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles have gotten accustomed to coasting or regenerative braking, also not taking off with jackrabbit starts. And they can physically see the difference on the screen on their computer that tallies up miles per gallon or fuel used or electricity used and it directly can affect your fuel economy. Obviously when the light turns green if you're flooring it to do burnouts, kind of like I do in my charger sometimes, Wizard. your fuel economy just went down the toilet. And don't be complaining the next time you go to get gas and wow it's so expensive I just filled up like three days ago. Yeah you did that bro. You did that, bro. So don't get mad. We're gonna have to not do the jackrabbit starts, flooring it and doing burnouts. Unless you have money to burn for gas, then go ahead, be my guest. Also, coming to a stop really fast. It doesn't seem like that would affect your fuel economy, but you have to remember in those few seconds of you coming to a stop, your transmission, whether it's an automatic or whatnot, is catching up or downshifting to get ready for the next gear. And it also goes along with habits. If you're stopping really fast, you're probably going really fast as well. And you need to get in the habit of stopping reasonably and also accelerating reasonably. If you do a lot of in-town driving, this can dramatically improve your miles per gallon. The light turns green. Obviously, we don't want to drive like we're 98 years old but just take off gingerly, like ginger, like my beard. Remember, red beard, wizard's red beard, ginger. Gingerly accelerate. I can remember many times being in a hurry, flying around people. One guy's really ticking me off, going really slow. I floor it and go around him, and only to get to the same destination to find out it would literally saved me three seconds all that gas wasted really didn't gain that much time. So keep that in mind as well. So oh, I gotta hurry, I gotta go 98 miles an hour. No, you probably don't and it probably won't make that big of a difference anyways. So make sure you're watching your driving habits that can really affect your fuel economy. The next one we're going to talk about is octane rating. Most cars today are set up for your basic 87 octane. If you put 91, you're not going to get better miles per gallon. That's a farce and that's a lie. The reason why is because the computer programming is not even set up to take advantage of 91 octane. It's not going to boost your ignition timing. It's not going to do anything different. It is permanently hardwired for 87 octane. I hear some people sometimes say, yeah, I got a Buick LeSabre with a 3.8 I always put 91 in it and I get 10 more miles per gallon. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's a lie. Octane is how fast the fuel burns. That's it. If you're going to advance ignition timing to get more power, you don't want the gas burning too fast. So you get a higher octane rating that resists burning so fast and resist ignition knock. 
But if you have a car like Mrs. Wizard's Maserati Levante, it very specifically says 91 octane. You should put 91 octane in that vehicle because the timing tables and everything about the engine is set up to take advantage of the higher octane. If she were to put 87 in her car, the computer will start detecting knock and it will actually pull the timing back. You will lose ignition timing and you will lose power. Yes, it will run on it, but you'll find that you're giving 20% more of your gas pedal to get the same amount of power that you're used to and you're using more gas. So if you have a car that specifically says 91 octane and you'll be tempted to put cheaper gas in it, don't because you'll lose power. You actually will lose power. Your computer will dial back the power to use the fuel and you'll use more fuel so it doesn't make sense. The next one we're going to talk about is repairs to your vehicle. Raise your hand if you're driving around right now with your check engine light on and you're like, nah bro, I ain't even going to go there because I don't have the money for the repairs right now. Well, you could have a bad mass airflow sensor, a bad oxygen sensor, you could have a misfire, you could have multiple items that are going on in your computer that are costing you literally five miles per gallon. We need to make sure our engines are running, especially now, with gas prices the way they are, in top condition. You might be surprised you take your car in to check to see what the check engine light is and they say it's a bad O2 sensor, it's going to be 200 bucks, you fix it and your gas mileage jumps from 25 to 30 miles per gallon. Over the course of the next year, you will have, you'll definitely recoup the money you just spent. You don't really have to go to a shop. You can go to your favorite auto parts store. They usually will scan the codes for free. And if it just says mass airflow sensor or oxygen sensor, you could take it to a shop and say, just replace the oxygen sensor. I don't want to hear any more sob stories about anything else just replace my oxygen sensor. It could very well be worth it. Misfires, oxygen sensor, mass airflow sensor, knock sensor, a whole bunch of slew of different things could be wrong in your engine if your check engine light is on that is literally pulling money out of your bank account by ignoring it. So don't ignore the check engine light, especially now. The next one we're going to talk about is cruise control. Most of us say, yeah, we all have cruise control, big deal. You would be surprised. I've had more than one customer, they're usually older people, and I don't know why it is, but they're older men usually, that have told me, I don't use my cruise control. No computer is going to tell me how fast I'm going to go or take control over my gas pedal because I control the gas pedal. It's an older mentality, it's an older way of thinking. They're usually people that don't fully understand how computers work and they don't want to give control to something that they don't understand. So yes, there are people out there that do not want to use their cruise control and that can cost you money in fuel. If you're going to be driving the next 400 miles at a steady speed and you're going on a family vacation, you want to use your cruise control. It sets it at 70 or 75 or whatever it is you're traveling at and it stays there. That is the best fuel economy you're going to get when it can maintain a steady flat speed. Another option as well is if the speed limit is 75, go 65. If you're not in a huge hurry, that can add 10 miles per gallon. If your car is rated for 30 on the highway, when you go 75 and 80 and start going into those really high speeds, it begins to drop. You're back down to 25 miles per gallon. If you knock down the speed that you're going, 5 or 10 miles an hour can literally be 5 or 10 miles per gallon. It really can, guys. Now don't go too far with it. I used to have an ant that would drive 55 everywhere, all the time. And it was for fuel economy reasons. I can understand where she was coming from but it actually made a lot of people angry. She mentioned, she said, I never seen so many people flip me the bird and stuff. They're, they're really mad at me, but you know what? I want to save gas. There's kind of a balance there, guys. 
You want to dial it back a little bit to save on fuel, but you don't want to have a line of traffic behind you either. So there's a balance there. The next one we're going to talk about is air conditioning. There are some of us out there that are air conditioning snobs. If it's above 65 degrees, the AC is on. I need the AC. That can actually save you some gas by turning it off. If you look at the weather forecast and it's no higher than 75 today, leave the AC off. Roll the windows down around town. Obviously on the highway you don't want to do that. You can actually start to lose fuel economy by having the windows down because it's such a drag on aerodynamics. But around town, if it's only 70 outside, 75, roll down the windows. You say, well, I gotta have my AC. Well, you gotta have your AC or you gotta have better fuel economy. Which one is it? If you can afford it, go for it. But if it's really hurting you right now to put gas in your car, maybe turn off the AC unless you really, really need it. Also, if you go to work early in the morning, it's 68 degrees outside, you have your AC on from the day prior, turn it off. Don't turn it back on until you get off of work and it's 98 degrees outside, then you can turn on your AC. But in the morning you didn't need it, but you used it anyway because you weren't even thinking about it. Most of us in North America right now are going into summertime, but guess what? In Australia they're going into winter time. That's right. Cold in July, can you imagine that? But I bet your AC is still on. You're not even thinking about it. Turn it off. You don't need it. It can literally be three or four miles per gallon. So make sure to keep that in mind as well. The next one we're going to talk about is family vacations. You're going on a thousand mile trip. Don't just plug it into the GPS and take for granted that it's the best route. If you really study your route, there may be ways you can shave off a hundred miles off your trip. If you're going a thousand miles and you shave off two here and five there and ten there, by the time you get to the end of your trip, 50 or 100 miles could have been shaved off your trip because the GPS just says this is a good route, it's fast, or this is a good route, it's less traffic. It's not even caring about how many miles it is. So make sure to keep that in mind as well. Study the map. Kind of look where it's going. You might see, wow, this highway here is 10 miles shorter than this other one that it chose automatically for me. And you can make some changes and adjustments and actually save some money. That can also work on a trip across town. There may be a, short, a shorter trip or a shorter way. Most of us that have lived in a town for a long time probably have faster routes or faster ways. You would tell a friend, you say, don't take this way. I know from experience it's five miles out of the way. Take this way, it's a lot faster. That can save you gas as well. The next one is gas apps on your phone. Mrs. Wizard uses one all the time. We're getting ready to fill up. She'll pull up the gas app. There's different kind, different brands, different companies that have one. You research the one that you like the best, but it can literally show all the gas stations in town and what the current prices are on the fly. You might go across town two miles out of your way. It'll save you 20 cents a gallon on gas. And if you're filling up a 35 gallon tank, it can be a huge savings, all from an app on your phone. This is especially true on that family vacation again. It has saved us so much money where we're cruising up to an off-ramp and gas is, at the time, was $2.75 a gallon. And Mrs. Wizard looks up on her app and says, one mile into town, it's $2.15 a gallon. One mile saved us so much money. The last one are things that do not work. Additives and chips. Guys, there's nothing that you're going to pour in your gas tank that's going to give you 10 more miles per gallon. There's just not. I have family members that swear by it and say, I won't travel without putting this and that and this and $20 worth of this and that. And I get five more miles per gallon if I do that. No, you don't. The computer is set up to burn gasoline and a certain octane rating. It's not going to change because it, it's not going to sense a difference because you put some kind of additive in your gas tank. An octane booster on a car that's programmed for 87 octane will do nothing. 
That's not going to change anything. I guarantee you the computer, if you can monitor the ignition tables while you were driving, and you pour in some octane booster, the tables will not change. How are you getting more power now then? You're not. I mean, you could put fuel injector cleaner and it may clean the injectors and get a better combustion, but it's half a mile per gallon, if that. I mean, and then the money you spent on the additive, it really doesn't pan out. So, no, there's nothing you can pour into your gas tank that's going to really make that big of a difference. The next thing is those gizmos or gadgets, just like this picture here. Things you can buy on eBay. It says, 20 more miles per gallon. Just cut the wires on your airflow sensor and wire this in. Or You'd be surprised the amount of hoods I've opened and I see these little gadgets hanging off of sensors and things. And I'm like, what, the, what is that? And the customer's like, oh, that gets me more, five more miles per gallon. I'm like, It's probably why your check engine light is on. Oh yeah, it did come on, but you know, that's just the way it is. No, no, don't do it guys. Now a tune, I could say that a tune can give you more miles per gallon. You can put a 91 octane tune like on my Dodge Charger and you can, you can get a little bit more power, which means you can use less throttle. That is possible. A tune is possible for better fuel economy. But just some little thing you wire in under your hood, no, that's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to work. And lastly, as a little bonus, if your car has a button that says economy or econ, a lot of Honda Civics or different hybrid cars have econ button, go ahead and use it. Yes, it's probably going to turn off your AC at a red light. Yes, you're going to have less power. You're going to notice a big difference. But if you go with the flow and accept it for what it is and use it, you, you could save some gas. You really could save at the pump. So those are 10 or 11 items that can possibly help you save in these times of high gas prices. And probably they're not going down anytime soon. So it's, it's easy to say, ah, car wizard, I'm not worried about that. Prices will finally go back down. They, what if they don't? We're going to all have to adopt a lot of these habits permanently. So if you're curious what kind of tools that we use to work on this yacht, Yes, it's a yacht. I call it that. Or in the shop. Check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because I've really got to go pee really bad right now because of the water that's draining out of that boat. Guys, I got to go. Thanks for watching.